Hey guys, so I thought I might do a vlog today because I haven't done one in quite a while and I haven't even put up a video in quite a while so I thought I might do a video today uh, just to talk about a few things that I wanted to make a video about, talk a little bit about the future of this channel, some ideas for 2017 and a little bit about wrapping up this year. So I've got a few things I want to talk about. This is going to be one of those rambly videos uh, where I kind of meander and go off on tangents so if that's not your thing then there are plenty of other videos of course on this channel that you can check out. I want to do more videos like this but now because it's a bit of a quieter day than usual I managed to find some time just to talk to you guys. So the first thing I wanted to talk about today is I wanted to introduce a new segment on this channel, an app of the year, something which I haven't really done much on this channel before, but I did want to talk about and highlight one application this year that has made, and this is the definition of which it, what it's going to be in future, is uh, it's a, a Linux application that has made Linux more usable to more people. So it's expanded the usefulness of the Linux-based operating systems that we use to more people. So, for example, uh, notable mentions this year would be, for example, Caden Live. Now, Caden Live, of course, was not started this year, but it has come on leaps and bounds lately, and this year has seen some amazing releases from Caden Live. Caden Live is, of course, the video editing software that I use to edit most of these videos, at least the videos that, that are sort of put together in a reasonably well, uh, you know, in a reasonably good format with the nice audio and the camera angles and all that kind of stuff. And it has become more stable with more features that works more stably, stably. It work in a more stable fashion as well. Uh, it's pretty good for things like chroma keying and chroma holding, so that's like effects with color. Uh, Caden Live is, 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 is a great uh, piece of software. Another um, application that is also worth a mention, I would say, is Electron. Now, Electron is really more of, of something that you use to build an application with, but Electron allows you to run a web app almost as a desktop application and was used uh, in the new official uh, Skype client for Linux. I think it's called Skype for Linux. It is an Electron-based app made by Microsoft for Linux to use Skype. And it's really, really good. It's, you know, it, it, it does have problems with, with its, uh, you know, it is a bit resource intensive. And of course it is, you know, sort of linked to the internet. But if it allows more cross-platform software to be made, I am 100% in favor of it. So Electron, a very great um a piece of work that is the you know it is the collective amalgamation of several other open source projects so it's an example of, of good open source in action but um those are not the actual proper um app pick for this year the actual app pick for this year and it is it's, you know it's going to be heavily biased by my own personal self-interests as well so you know I'm, I'm not certainly saying that this is some kind of objective measurement but the app this year that I'm going to be picking for the app of the year is going to be OBS open broadcaster software um, and the reason why is very simply because up until OBS and OBS again it wasn't sort of it didn't come out this year it has been around for a few years now but it has allowed to us to capture like to do screen caps and live streams for the Linux platform so if it wasn't for OBS I wouldn't be live streaming either on Twitch or a crossover on this channel and it's a really well put together piece of software as well it's the only piece of uh, video recording software that I think uses hardware which puts a, you know which takes some of the strain off um, which which uses you know hardware encoding like GPU based um, encoding so it takes a little bit of strain off the CPU and considering that at least with my daily driver uh, PC the CPU is like the weakest link I know that like, like every PC that you've ever got it's got like one element which is just a little bit below the rest of the uh, below part of the other components and with me and my daily driver that's the CPU because if I wanted to upgrade the CPU I need to upgrade the motherboard and you know what palaver that is so I'm putting it off as long as possible. In fact, I'm tempted to make it a New Year's resolution to actually not update my PC. Um, because uh, I think it's, was it Leo Laporte said that, um, you know, like fast computers are for people that don't really know how to use them. Like slow and older computers, you know, like people who, who know a lot about computers can really make them sing. And, and that's kind of a bit of uh, perspective that has really stayed with me. It's like, well, yeah, like, I mean, it depends obviously on the context. If you're a, a big gaming person, then obviously hardware is going to be an issue. If you do a lot of video editing, then that's obviously, you know, hardware is going to be an issue. I've got, a, I've got a NVIDIA 970 in that box. So it's not incredibly slow, but 
you know, when you upgrade the motherboard, I also find that you almost inevitably end up upgrading RAM or other components as well because motherboards uh, and fittings on motherboards change over time, of course. So what I might do is I might just like set it as a New Year's resolution, learn how to, to work on lower end hardware possibly, but I'll, uh, I'll leave that one um, until uh, later on. But... Yeah, OBS. It allows me to do, record screen caps. It allows me to record 60 frames per second games now uh, without putting too much of a load on the CPU, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and it allows you to edit all the scenes in real time. And yeah, it is It is a piece of software that has certainly made Linux a lot more usable for myself personally. Um, but I have also known, a, a, you know, like other people... Uh, use it who 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 have been like holding back from from taking Linux even seriously because it is a serious piece of software like multimedia based pieces of software are difficult to make like they require the highest echelons of software programmers to actually get together you know like it's really difficult stuff I've been told to 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 work on multimedia stuff so you know the people that are, that are working on that kind of stuff would otherwise be earning big bucks uh, doing it professionally so it's you know that that sort of um, kind of sacrifices something that I per I like I deeply deeply appreciate it. So yeah. Uh open broadcaster software that is that is my app of the of the of the year uh partly because of its usability, partly because of how difficult an app like that is to make and partly because of how well it's made. Like you look on the website, it'll show you installation instructions for multiple Linux distributions. So it's not just Ubuntu and then, you know, work it out for yourself for other distributions. Like they have done a proper um you know, they've done proper documentation. Uh, they're serious about their source code. Like, it's open and readily available on GitHub. Uh, the support is pretty... Like, they've got a working IRC room and forums and stuff like that. They have taken... You know, that's a very serious piece of software that they've developed, um, you know, in, in a way that I, I really like to see in the open source world. And, in, you know, in a general... Uh, wider context. This has been a great year for open source. It might not have been the best year uh, in other aspects, but yeah, like, um, you know, we, almost every Linux distribution I've tried um, this year has been has been positive. It has been great. And even, I think the one that I have, have was most negative on, I think it was Corora, um, which did effectively end, like, you know, in, in practice, ended up being Fedora Plus uh, a few more useful repositories. Like it wasn't bad. It was just, um, you know, I felt like it, 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 it didn't bring enough to the table to warrant a separate distribution, if you know what I mean. Because then, then you have to, you know, support it and maintain it, all that kind of stuff. And and those things, you know, you know, are, are what struggle to keep a, a distribution afloat in the long term. Someone does have to maintain a distribution. It takes a lot of work. And if it is just, uh, you know, and, and and then you need to support it and all that kind of stuff. So so that's kind of where where um where I stood with it. But even then, like, it wasn't bad. Like, it wasn't falling apart. It wasn't unusable. Like, if Corora was the only Linux distribution available to me, I'd use it and I'd probably still be pretty happy with it. Uh, so I'd still be quite happy with it, really. So... Um, and any and the stuff that was 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 not you know the the stuff that was wrong with it couldn't even you know like it wasn't that it couldn't be fixed it was because it was a newbie friendly distribution um, it it shouldn't have to have been it should have been like it should have come out of the box um, more you know you know sort of unpacked like advanced Linux distributions for example like Arch I, I I say well look you have have set yourself in the niche of yeah, this is these are for people that already know Linux, that already know computers, that are comfortable reading through manuals. And then you've got the likes of Linux Mint, which are like, oh, you can just pick up and use us. You know, I'm going to to review each of those uh, Linux distributions in a separate context, which is sometimes why I might give leniency to user interface on some distributions more so than others. It again, it's like I'm trying to interpret and look through look at this distributions the way that that their primary type of user might. Um, might look at it. So there is also so yeah, OBS app of the year. Um, there was some good competition. There was some tight competition, but because of OBS's sheer like the 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 impressiveness and the uniqueness of the software as well. There there is Simple Screen Recorder, which is probably the second favorite 
uh, screen capping piece of software and I really do like it I like the options on it but it only records from a single sound channel and the streaming to you know to stream to to um, Twitch or YouTube is difficult not impossible but it is kind of difficult so with OBS you've got so many more options and it's you know but then again like simple screen recorder that's worth an honorable mention because that's that's done by one guy and it's a really and again that is a piece of software that has multiple Linux distributions in the installation instructions uh, you know good with the source code good with uh, keeping up development that, you know, simple screen recorder. It's a, you know, it's a second place in that department, but it's a very good second place. Like it's, uh, this is a far cry from from again, like five years ago. I was I was clawing for great screen capping software and great video editing software. Like that was frustrating me so much that that you know that was and that was holding me back from from going all Linux. Like I had to dual boot because of that. So, um, so yeah, the next thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, was my daily driver, my Linux distribution, Manjaro, uh, the XFC edition, XFCE edition. This is the distribution I've been using all year, actually. Um, the Manjaro XFCE edition, 64-bit, in case you were wondering. And I've got to say, it's the longest I've used a daily driver for a long, long time, probably since the days of Linux Mint. And I used Linux Mint for a couple of years at a time, and I was really happy with that. And then before that, the distribution I used the most was probably... I switched between various Ubuntu distributions based on the desktop, and before that it was Fedora. So, it, you know, I, I've gone quite quite a journey, and those are only distributions that I've been using, should we say, for longer than a year. So, it's uh, Manjaro is among the distributions that I've used for longer than a year and have been very happy with, and that is that is among a, a very small number of distributions. And I'm still very happy with it. I'm still very very happy with it indeed. But what value is there really in staying in your comfort zone? So I'm going to be using a different, I was going to say either desktop, uh, either distribution or desktop environment for 2017, or at least the first half, the first six months of 2017. So I want to try something new. It was either going to be a new distribution, a new desktop environment, or both. And I've got to say, I am just too happy with Manjaro to change distribution in 2017. But oh, I was possibly thinking about Antergos at some point, but um, I think that there is a, a degree of benefit now of me looking at a different desktop environment to use during the first half of 2017, and if I enjoy it, the, the second half as well, uh, to look at things from a new perspective. So um, I recently actually uh, took off XFCE and put on the KDE Plasma desktop, but this was the one that I was using um, in my initial trial of Manjaro, and that was really good. But um, I am familiar with KDE, like I've used it on previous distributions, and it and, and, and it's it's a very full featured desktop environment, which kind of means that it, there's not too much of a challenge to use. And since I've used it in distributions before, it will take you know like you know, and, and I've installed it, like I've been playing around with different desktop environments, trying to look at what, you know which ones I can I can look to use to 2017, and I've been playing around with KDE slash Plasma, and I'm too comfortable with that as well. I feel. Um, especially considering it's a full-featured, reasonably user-friendly um, desktop environment. Very customizable. I do actually quite like KDE and Plasma. I've decided at the, at the current uh, point in time, I've got compositing off because I do find that compositing uh, on the KDE desktop environment does increase the system resources, but it's really nice and snappy now that I've turned compositing off. It, the desktop doesn't look as good, and I've got to say for the KDE Plasma Desktop 5, there is a very limited number of themes. Like That was actually a legitimate, serious disappointment for me, was that there were only seemed to be a handful, half a dozen, six, five uh, themes that were available, full desktop themes that were available for Plasma 5. And I know that it's a very new desktop environment. Well, it's not that new now, um, and you you know you got Breeze, Breeze Dark, Maya, Menda, and I think that was about it. Uh, there might have been a, a another one in there, Oxygen, and those seem to be like all all the KDE themes. So if you've got any idea, if you if you know any good KDE themes that are available in the Manchara repositories or the AUR, let me know in the description down below because that would be quite interesting. I feel that the big you know like there there are enough to get by. There's not enough to put me off, you know, and, and it's not like it's it's something so superficial that that would make me you know stay or leave for a desktop environment. But I think if you've got a, a good number of themes available, um, and you know if if I was the um, you know I I I would like to see see that be standard in more um de uh, in in more distributions in general just like have a pre-installation of of about 6 to 10 really good themes some light some dark probably you probably only need about six significantly different ones 
uh, some light, some dark. And, 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 and that would be enough for a dis distribution, I think. And Manjaro KDE comes with about six but some of them are quite similar but um but that's like just enough i think you know with oxygen and breeze and breeze dark you've kind of got just all your bases covered but i think with kde plasma they've just got the bare minimum themes to make it really what you could really call customizable i think um again it's new and you've got something like xfce and they've got loads of themes um quite simply because they do not update that desktop environment very much which makes me actually think that it's really good for rolling releases because it's just one less thing that you have to constantly keep updating as well and it keeps things nice and simple i do really like xfce as a desktop environment it's probably my favorite if i'm completely honest the you know i, I have found it to be stable i found it to be customizable i found it to be sh you know snappy and good on resources and it still looks Looks quite good. The arc theme is beautiful. You can install that on there. Vertex. So, you know, XFCE has got a lot going for it. I do not know why it's not more um, more widely used. You can even switch out the compositor for something like Compiz or 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 Compton or something like that, and, and make it look really nice that way. So, this get, gets me back to my uh, initial question. Uh, sort of my initial thoughts on what desktop environment am I going to be using for 2017. Uh, I don't think I want it to be KDE Plasma because, again, it would just be another year of me using a desktop environment that I'm really already quite satisfied and familiar with. So, if you guys have any particular thoughts, now's the time to voice them in the comments section below, right? Uh, let me know what you think, uh, what, dis uh, what desktop environment I should use. Now, it's going to be one that's going to be from a currently maintained Manjaro release. So, that's going to be uh, GNOME Budgie. Um, there is i3, but I don't think I'm going to bother. I don't think I'm going to do i3. Um, uh, LXQT, uh, Mate, and Cinnamon. And I don't really want to particularly do Cinnamon. Realistically, I'm thinking of either Gnome or Budgie, possibly Mate. But how you know, a year on Mate uh, after a year on XFCE, very similar desktop environments. It would probably very well end up being that I would just use Mate as a very happy, you know, user and and not really challenge myself too much on that department. So something like Budgie, which is GTK3 based, kind of got a few new desktop user interface paradigms there that might be interesting. Or GNOME 3, which is a very different user paradigm, um, but um, but something that I can explore and get used to and and learn more about on, on, on face value. Because I've noticed that X, as XFCE goes from its GTK2 to its GTK3 transition, um, there are like disruptions in, in UI. Like I've never been the biggest fan of the client side decorations. You know how the, the buttons all go up at the top of GNOME 3 applications. I've always thought, you know, the file edit view menus have been perfect. I know when you've got text-based uh, buttons, you've got translation uh, issues there. Uh, whereas if you've got like graphical images and, and, and icon themes, then, you know, you don't have to obviously translate this, but you still have to translate the tooltips. So you're still, I suppose, you know, in the same, uh, you know, you're, you're sort of in the same ballpark or whatever. But um, uh, yeah, like with GNOME 3, one of the big interface changes I really don't like is that they're getting rid of the file edit view menus in favor of just buttons that directly go on there. And then you've got like a preference menu, which is like, a you know, uh, it, it looks a little bit more like what you might expect from a mobile interface rather than a traditional desktop with the the file you know edit view menus at the top but i've i've never heard anyone complain that the file edit view menus have been a bad ui choice um and kde slash plasma have decided to keep with them and mate uh, and their apps have decided to keep with them i think xfce as it because i think i feel that xfc it sort of adopts more apps from maybe other desktop environments possibly possibly um Especially when it comes to like maybe GTK, you know, as there are a handful of GTK3 apps in the XFCE desktop environment at the moment, you can kind of start see see the uh, the GTK3 apps sort of creeping through like sort of app by app on release by release. Um, and it seems to be just sort of uh, XFCE just seems to be taking its UI in stride with how GTK3 apps just seem to be being developed. But um, but it is going to be a shame to see like many apps now starting to lose their traditional menus in favor of uh, GTK3 style UIs. We, you know, I mean, I'll live, I'll survive, but it's like, you know, no one, it, it seems to be something, it seems to have, uh, you know, my grandfather always used to say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I feel that that's the same way with some of the UI changes. Uh, but then again, I felt that with menus and panels and, and, and I've come around and I've actually, I've even felt that with tablets. I, I thought, always thought tablets were a gimmick and, and, and now, you know, 
many people I know use them regularly and and swear by them and I've used them and 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 thought that they have been really quite good the touch interfaces for touch devices is actually very well thought out I've always thought but anyway so I'm looking at possibly Budgie GNOME 3 but if you guys have any thoughts on what I could use um and why you know if you've got any reasons let me know in the description down below as well so I think that's going to be it. It's been a while since I did one of these rambly vlogs where I just sort of chat and, and, and talk uh, talk about the current state in Linux. I might do a couple of these videos before the new year, but the reason why I haven't been putting out videos so much is simply because I intend on putting out a fair amount of content in 2017. I'm just taking a little bit of a break. I'm not like completely holding off, maybe not doing as many live streams, maybe not doing as many videos as I have been because, you know, it's, it's the holiday season. It's a good time to to take a break um because you know so i don't get burnt out for 2017 i want to put out i you know i want to put out a lot of content in 2017 i'm going to aim for a video a day but um and, and i'm going to make that like a serious aim but don't you know you guys you know that's 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 a something that i'm, I'm going to try and hold myself to and, and don't um you know, don't take that as any kind of sort of like promise or anything like that because things fall apart quite easily, especially when you're doing daily videos. But I really want to uh, take a good stab at it or at least uh, best I can. Wouldn't always be a video, of course, on this channel. It might be a Game of Thrones video on ours is the theory uh, or it might be a Fun with Flags video, which are two other channels that um, I both use. So if you're a fan of Game of Thrones or you're a fan of Flags, um, I will put links to my Flags and Game of Thrones channel down in the description below, as well, of course, as my Twitter, because if I am live streaming, I am going to try and remind everyone on Twitter. I know it's not something that I've always been the best at. I usually just go on live streams whenever I kind of feel like it at an impromptu moment and neglect to mention on Twitter. But I'm going you know, to try, try and improve on that one. So, yeah, follow me on Twitter if you want to know when I'm going live, either on Twitch or um, YouTube. And, of course... Um, I'll put my Twitch channel and I'll put my second channel in the description as well. I'll put all the links, all the links. I've got a second channel for those of you that don't know. And if you've made it this far into the video, you, you know, you, you might be interested in more content. So second channel. Uh, and if I do just do like a daily vlog where I ramble like this and instead of putting too many of those videos up on the channel, I might put them on the second channel, whatever. I'll work it out. I'll work it out. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to check out Twitter, second channel, Twitch, um... Game of Thrones channel or the Fun with Flags channel down in the description below and feel free to let me know if there are any KDE slash Plasma Desktop 5 themes that you would like to recommend that are like available in the AUR or whatever and um, and which desktop environment I should possibly consider trying out for 2017. That's a lot in there, isn't it? But um, yeah, like I say, um, I look forward to the future. Um, that's about it from me today. Thank you very, very much for watching these old-style videos. And uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.